I'm pretty sure she doesn't know the extent of a surgery like that. Just saying. Given the title of this episode, I am concerned about what's coming next. <laughs> what I am laughing at is JD is a resident, and that is so on par for residency, I just, I can't even. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jess the MD. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're gonna be watching another episode of Scrubs. Let's get right into it. Oh, that feels so good, right there. Yeah. Let's have the other foot. No! Okay, I have a huge bunion. Oh, oh come on. Sean's coming back in like a few weeks. What am I supposed to do? Well, I think the obvious answer is to draw Sean's face on it and tell him you grew it because you missed him. Or it's a simple surgery. Uh, Turk, I think we've already decided on bunion face. Shut me the hell up. So Elliot is super blasé about having a bunion surgery. That surgery is rough. It involves breaking the bones of your big toe. It's a lot. So her being so nonchalant about it, I'm pretty sure she doesn't know the extent of a surgery like that. Just saying. If I decide to keep my last name after we get married, that's no big deal, right? Of course not, baby. We'll just have one of those modern marriages where the husband and wife don't love each other. <gasps> it's Jack's first birthday. I want it to be special. Ha, ba, ba. Would you sip it, nerd? I'm thinking that probably you shouldn't come. Why not? Because her whole family is in town. Hi, JD. Oh, my God. What do you say to a girl you dumped three weeks ago? I destroyed that videotape we made. What tape? <clears throat> <laughs> So the golf club to the testicles, testicular injuries. Something like that can cause a testicular torsion, meaning the testicle actually spins on the nerve and vasculature bundle that holds it in the scrotum, or you can even have a full on testicular rupture, both of which are pretty bad and pretty painful. So is their brother Ben coming in for this thing too? Oh yeah, he always has to make some grand entrance then he just winds up depressed afterwards. Why is that? <laughs> Because <laughs> he never surprises us. Hey, a little bit? No. Thorns! Yeah. Bloody. <laughs> That's good. Now this time, try and do it with your head in sort of a less jarring position. So you still doing the whole kooky guy who brings his camera everywhere thing? Till the day I die. Uh -huh. What's weird is it has taken my best friend so long to come and see my son. I mean, you get diagnosed with leukemia and then you disappear for two years. What is that about? Well, it went into remission and I wanted to go out and see the world for all its splendor and glory. How'd that go for you? Yeah. Got some good pictures, though. So Jordan tells me that while you were out on your world leukemia tour, you neglected to visit a single doctor, medicine man, or scary shaman with the giant saucers in his ears. Psst. Ben. Turns out cancer is the kind of ailment that you occasionally want to check up on. So he was diagnosed with leukemia, it sounds like a few years ago, and he was initially treated, but he then went on this gallivanting journey around the world and didn't check in with any physicians or anything. And that is something that is extremely important to do because that initial treatment doesn't always get rid of all the big bad cells, the blast cells that are the basis of leukemia. He really should have been checking in. And given the title of this episode, I am concerned about what's coming next. You know, Elliot, you're eventually gonna have to take off your sock. If I do, then from now on, whenever you guys look at me, all you're gonna think is giant gross foot. Okay, you know what? Maybe it would be better if you focused on how you're doing this for Sean. I mean, if there was something about me physically that bothered Carla, I would be excited to fix it for her. I mean, it'd probably make our relationship even better and more... I hate your mole. What? What? <laughs> Baby, you said it was your tickle button. You made me shave my mustache. That was before I knew what was under there. Hello there. So moles like that, especially on the face, definitely need to be checked out. From a distance, it looked pretty normal. If we're talking about the concerning signs of moles, we go by the ABCDEs of melanoma. A stands for asymmetry. If the mole is asymmetrical in any way, that is concerning. B stands for border. When borders are irregular, that's a lot more concerning than smooth borders. C stands for color. If the color is pretty uniform throughout the mole, that is much less concerning than if the mole has different colors, darkened spots, lighter spots. D stands for diameter. So if a mole 
hole is larger than six millimeters across, that is a sign that it should be checked out. That means it's getting pretty big and needs to be at least looked at by a dermatologist, if not biopsied. Finally, E stands for evolving. So if the mole is changing over time and relatively quickly, that is much more concerning than if you found a mole and it stayed the same over time. So should I be worried about the old ticker? Oh, Mr. Taylor, let me worry about that for you. Oh my God, he's gonna die. I'm not laughing at the fact that this patient may die. What I am laughing at is JD as a resident freaking out internally when he's trying to be confident for his patient. That is on par. That is on par. <laughs> and it. Perfect timing. I have to run $150 down to the police station because Mr. Jinky the Juggler, who Jordan just has to have for Jack's birthday party, just got a DUI. Yeah. Only me. Long story short, your new job is to take young Ben here by the hand and run every hematological screening test we have. Uh, Dr. Cox, I can't. I'm already covering for Doug. He's on a his and her spa day with his mom. What? Don't ask. The point is, I'm swamped, and I'm a little worried about Mr. Taylor here. Uh... Mr. Taylor. For the life of me, I can't figure out his regular heartbeat. I already looked at his EKG, newbie. And trust me, he's not going to die in the next 30 minutes. Now... What I love even more here is that as an attending, Dr. Cox has already taken a look and he's like, the man's fine, you're fine, don't worry about it. Meanwhile, JD's like, I don't know enough and I'm freaking out. And that is so on par for residency, I just, I can't even. I see this guy is supposed to be a great plastic surgeon. Okay, so who wants what, bigger or smaller? My fiance would like to have his mole removed. That? That's cute. It's like a tickle button. No, it's not. It needs to go away. All right, I'll scrape it away. And we'll cover the area with skin we'll graft from the backside of your upper thigh. So you'd be a butt face. <laughs> That'd be a funny nickname. No, it would. Yes, it would. God, how long does it take to fill a bottle with pills? I'm sorry, madam. I hope we didn't wake you. It's just that I have like 50 patients and I... Uh, That's a code. Oh no, is Mr. Taylor coding? That would be the worst. And also that would make Dr. Cox wrong, which is also scary because the man is like never wrong. Okay, not never wrong, but he's rarely wrong. Okay, moving on from that. The mole. Realistically, Turk should probably be seeing a dermatologist and specifically a Mohs surgeon. They specialize in taking things off of the face that ideally should be taken off of the face and doing it in an aesthetically pleasing way. Yeah, sure, a plastic surgeon could do it, but I feel like that mole isn't quite big enough to need grafting of skin from his buttocks, but butt face would be a pretty funny name. Oh, thank God you're here. I totally need someone to talk to. Usually I would talk to Dr. Cox, but he's out doing stuff. And of course there's always Laverne, but I'm kind of her boss, and I like to avoid getting too up close and personal with staff members who work below me. That's too high. See, it's just, <laughs> I told Turk I didn't like his mole, and I feel guilty now. Have you seen it? I mean, you can't avoid it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Kelso is afraid of Carla, and so I totally get that. <laughs> Dr. Cox. What's the matter with you there, Sheila? You look like Maybelline just went belly up. 20 minutes after you left, he went into cardiac arrest. We tried to resuscitate him, but there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry. Oh, man, bummer. This shouldn't have happened. Guilt's a funny thing. It can lead to denial. Kid screwed up. No, he didn't. He told you he has way too many patients. He swamped. The kid screwed up. Okay. Darn kid! So I think they're trying to tell us that Mr. Taylor coded, but I think I remember this episode, and I think I know what happens, and I don't want to know what happens. So let's keep watching. You know what, sweetie? I'm fine with getting rid of this mole, but you got to be willing to take my last name when we get married. That's perfect. Of course I will. What are you still doing here? I'm on call tonight. Not anymore. I'm taking all your patients. So wait, you think this was my fault? Hey, this is an emotional situation, so why don't you just go easy on the kid? It was your fault. Now get the hell out. I think that was Mr. Taylor, and he's still alive, and so I think the only other person is who I think it is, and I think it was Ben. 
Okay, besides that, Dr. Cox as an attending, speaking to a resident like that, ooh, would be grounds for calling the ACGME. Not okay. I understand, especially if it has actually been that past, like I think it was, that's Dr. Cox's brother-in-law and he loves him. And I understand that's Dr. Cox processing his grief, but still, oh gosh, this is a tough situation for both JD and Cox to be in. Dr. Cox, can I talk to you for a second? Hey, Val, you know, you know what's funny? It, ever since I started taking care of your patients, not one of them has died. <laughs> Look, you want to be mad at me, that's fine. I get it, okay? But Jordan called. She wants to make sure you show this afternoon. All right, good thing. Yeah, um, put us down for Ben plus one. I'm not going anywhere. So beat it. You guys, I don't want to do this. Oh, come on, no one's going to call you names. I know, but... Face! But face. Listen, my mole is a part of my identity and I need you guys to convince Carla to get me out of this. I'll go talk to her for you. Thank you. Okay, so I get that the mole is part of Turk's identity, but it looks like a really large mole and it really should be coming off and it should be biopsied, regardless of aesthetics, honestly. We go now? No. How about now? No, look, I think as a rule of thumb, I don't attend parties where the guest of honor has no idea what's going on. Yeah, I appreciate your concern, but you don't understand. <laughs> What don't I understand? Well, do you see all these people here? If I'm not here, people die. If I'm not here, people die. <laughs> Listen, why don't you just let me take this little mental breakdown of yours. I'm going to put it right here in my pocket. And then that way you can piss off for the afternoon. You can let one of the other 9,000 other doctors take care of things around here for you. So, can we go now? Provided that gets you off my back. Sorry, sir. It's been an emotional couple of days. I'm uh, just here to get a nasal speculum. I just wish I didn't hate that mole so much. I used one of these on my wife once. She's a terrible snorer. She used to keep me up all night. I made her have the surgery, but of course that just made things worse. But here's the twist. Now, Whenever she goes out of town, I can't fall asleep without the sound of that gasping, wheezing woman lying right next to me. Trust me, if I ever met a Japan air stewardess who snored like Enid, I'd marry her tomorrow. <laughs> but here's the point. You might find out that thing you hate so much is the very same thing you miss when it's gone. Kelso drops the knowledge. I mean, he's an old crotchety doc, but... He clearly has some care and some love very, very, very deep inside. That was actually a really sweet conversation between him and Carla. Oh, great. An open surgery slot just going to waste. <laughs> Not necessarily. Look at this. <sighs> oh. Oh. Uh, you don't just change surgeries like that, but also I don't think plastic surgeons typically do bunions. That's not a typical surgery that a plastic surgeon does. So just know. Well, I just want to say that what happened to when you fall. And I'm sorry. Thanks. I really needed to hear that. Good. Come on, let's get dressed and go. So now how come you don't have to get all dressed up? I am dressed up. Do you see any holes in these pants? No. I'm glad you made it. Listen, there's one more thing you have to do for me. You can't keep me from getting drunk. You have to forgive yourself for everything that went down the other day. <laughs> You're so annoying. Yeah. Okay. Good. I remember the sound. Warm December with you. But I don't have to make this mistake. And I don't have to stay this way. If only I would wait. Okay, well, um, whoever suggested that one, why are these episodes always ending on a very sad note now that I've semi-composed myself? Okay, number one, I forgot how actually emotional the whole scrub series is. I think when I was much younger watching this show, all of those emotional things didn't hit quite as hard as we get older and actually experience those things, unexpected deaths, 
those episodes definitely hit a lot harder. Okay, so I am having a rough time talking about unexpected deaths, so we're gonna go ahead and move right past that and talk a little bit about leukemia. With leukemia, even if it's gone into remission, there are several reasons why someone can die suddenly. One can be because the abnormal cells had already invaded the heart tissue, and that led to heart failure, which led to a cardiac arrest, especially since Ben hadn't been to a doctor, hadn't been monitored or screened for anything while he was out traveling. The other thing is any kind of malignancy can lead to increased risk of blood clots, blood clot can travel to the lungs, can travel to the heart, and can cause either a pulmonary embolism or a heart attack, respectively. So any one of those things could have happened. Obviously, we don't know for sure. All we do know for sure is that he unfortunately passed away suddenly. So in terms of dealing with sudden deaths, Dr. Cox's throwing himself into work kind of makes sense. It takes your mind off of it. And you think about the other things in your life and the people that are still alive. And sometimes that helps. I definitely can't talk about this very long, but everyone deals with it in their own way. And Dr. Cox dealt with it in his. I'm glad he went to the funeral. It's just a really hard thing to deal with in any situation. Well, now that y'all have <laughs> gotten me to cry on camera a couple times. Leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel. It really helps a girl out. I'm just the MD. Thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed spending time with you. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the very next one.